Hi, I'm Lucas, and unlike normal people, my idea of fun is obsessing and geeking out over productivity apps. There are two that, in my opinion, stand out far above the rest, and they are Tick Tick and Todoist. In this comparison review, I'll be going deep on both of them, but I won't list every single feature from A to Z. Instead, I will look at how well each app supports what I believe are key activities for actual productivity, which includes number one, capturing. Can we easily capture new thoughts and ideas wherever and whenever? Number two, clarifying. Can we give a meaning to what we've captured? Number three, organizing. Can we organize the information in our life in a way that makes sense for us? Number four, reviewing and reflecting. So are we able to look back on what we've done and make decisions based on that? And of course, number five, engaging, which is, is it actually fun and motivating us to do the things that we need to do at the right time? Let's begin by asking ourselves the question, how we can enter new input into our system. In other words, capturing. The two keywords here are quick and easy. We need to be able to do it fast and intuitively, no matter where we are or which device we're on. Both TickTick and Todoist have an inbox, a separate list, which is the default bucket for things to land into. Let's first see how we can manually add a task to this inbox. On the web and desktop apps, both of them have a dedicated add to inbox button. They also both have a hotkey for doing this, Q for Todoist and tap plus N for TickTick. Both apps also support quick out of app task creation. For Todoist, just make sure the app is running in the background so you can press Alt plus T at any time to add a new task. For TickTick, this can be done by pressing Control plus Alt plus A. On the mobile app, Todoist allows you to add tasks both from within the app, a dedicated home screen button, or widgets. And the same is true for TickTick. If you prefer voice commands, you can speak to Todoist with Google Assistant, Siri, or Alexa. Adding a task is, of course, one of the supported commands. And you guessed it, TickTick supports this as well. Now let's look at some of the differences with manual capturing. Todoist works on both Android and Apple branded smartwatches, whilst TickTick only supports Apple watches as of recording this video. However, TickTick has something Todoist does not, which is a desktop widget. This means you can add and view tasks directly from the widget instead of opening the app or pressing any hotkey right on your desktop view. Let's now look at some other ways with which we can capture. Todoist and TickTick both have a web clipper, which saves any web page's title plus link to open it from the app. You can also right click on any page and press add to Todoist or TickTick respectively. They also both have email integrations for Gmail and Outlook. They both save emails as a task with the email subject line and link, but the TickTick integration also sends the email body to TickTick as a task description, making it more powerful than Todoist. Both apps allow you to social share web pages and files you find online. For web pages, only the title and link are saved on both apps, not the contents. I see this as a major opportunity for both apps as enabling this would make reading saved articles directly from within the app a possibility and Evernote's Web Clipper does have this capability, for example. If you can't use or don't want an integration, both apps enable you to forward emails into them with a unique email address. However, both are flawed in their own ways. Todoist enables you to email to any list except for the inbox. TickTick, on the other hand, does not support email to anything but the inbox. Personally, I think emailing into the task manager inbox is more important, so TickTick wins out for me here. Now that we've covered all the ways with which you can capture new input into the system, let's see how they support us in clarifying this input. Both apps have full labeling functionality. This means you can tag any item with labels you've set up. 
These labels can also be color-coded on both apps. Both are flawed in their own ways, though. Todoist, for one, does not support nested labels, but supports special characters. With TikTok, it's the other way around. Nested tags are supported, but tags do not support special characters. And for me, that is more important, as I've become used to organizing my labels this way. Since I have dozens of them, I use special characters to distinguish their quote-unquote category and easily find them while typing. So Todoist wins out for me here. Both Todoist and TikTok have four levels of priority that you can assign to any individual item. Both apps also support due times down to the minute. They also have shortcuts for assigning a task to either today, tomorrow, or next week. They also support natural language and type shortcuts for setting due times, labels, and priorities. Multiple reminders are also supported by both apps. An awesome feature that both have is location-based reminders. I use it heavily, for example, by prompting my grocery list whenever it recognizes I'm in the store, or showing the tickets to an event I'm attending when I arrive there. This takes away stress as it means you won't see these things prematurely or too late based on a time you had estimated before, but rather whenever you're actually there. Todoist is a bit better in this department as you can configure these location-based reminders on any app including the desktop rather than just the mobile apps as is the case with TickTick. For more complex tasks that may warrant subtasks, both apps support this. If you've got a routine task, both apps support scheduling these down to the minute with start times, end times and specific repetition intervals. And here's where we finally arrive at one of the key differences between Todoist and TickTick, which is how they treat non-actionable items. This could be reference material or support material for a project you may be working on. And it usually comes in the form of written information, in other words, a note. In Todoist, you can make an item non-actionable by adding an asterisk in front of the title. This will make it incompletable. There's no check mark. You can then use the task description to add information, though this does have a character limit. Items forwarded via email capture cannot be turned into incompletable tasks at this time. The task description also does not support images or attachments. You will need comments for that. So all in all, Todoist's way of handling this is limited and a bit messy. TickTick, on the other hand, has a completely different item taxonomy for this, appropriately named Notes with pretty extensive formatting options, templates, and a focused writing mode, and an option to convert tasks into notes and back, this makes TickTick much more powerful in the note-taking department. Let's now discuss where items go after we've clarified them, and how you can easily find the right item when you need it. Inevitably, after being processed from the inbox, an item will need to be placed into a list. These are both available in TickTick and Todoist. So let's see how they compare. In Todoist, lists are named projects, which I think is a misnomer as they can be used for so much more than that. In TickTick, they're appropriately named lists. Todoist supports nested lists, while TickTick doesn't. TickTick does have folders, which you can nest both task and note lists under, but it does not go deeper than that. This is a major win for Todoist as not only can you go multiple levels deep, the main list can have items live within it as well, unlike a TickTick folder. This is helpful if you organize your tasks and projects by their related areas of focus. For example, making this YouTube video was a project for me under the YouTube list, which may have a standalone YouTube item like check analytics. TickTick enables you to create note or task lists, but this just affects the default state for any new item you add. Note lists can contain tasks, and task lists can contain notes. It's nice to see that it doesn't constrain you, but it also makes a separate list type needless, in my opinion. Todoist doesn't have it in the first place. Within a list, you can organize your tasks into custom named sections in both Todoist and TickTick. In Todoist, this is called the board view. In TickTick, it's the Kanban view. This is helpful for sequential projects. 
With filters, you can create custom lists that allow you to easily find items based on parameters that you decide. Both Todoist and TickTick allow you to select for or combine specific list membership, labels, priorities, and due times when creating a filter. Both apps also allow you to see your saved filters at a glance for easy access. TickTick has an awesome feature to pin filters to the top with an emoji, which Todoist does not. TickTick's filtering functionality is more intuitive and advanced than Todoist at the same time. Intuitive in that it has an easy setup menu, whereas Todoist only accepts syntax. Advanced in that this intuitive menu has more options than Todoist does. The usefulness of this advanced filtering is a second discussion. You'll probably get by fine with Todoist filtering capabilities, but TickTick does have more for specific use cases. Both apps, of course, have search functionality, which you can use to find items by searching for their name, label, filter, or description text. TickTick has some unique features that I want to highlight here. For one, it has an Eisenhower matrix view. This is a way to prioritize tasks, and it's all in sync with the main system. You can set up your own rules for it, too. Its calendar view is also much better than Todoist, as it not only shows it in a list format, but as an actual calendar that you can sync with your Google Calendar, among others. In addition, TickTick has a habit view, which is kind of a glorified routines list, but still intuitive to use, as it has a setup wizard, which allows you to build new habits, sustain good ones, or just get reminded about regular items that need your attention, such as taking out the trash. An often overlooked part of productivity is the ability to review and reflect. Now, of course, you can do this by manually going over your system, checking all the tasks, projects, etc., and how they're progressing. But built-in features like an activity log, but also templates, can support you in this. Both Todoist and TickTick have the ability to create and import templates. In Todoist, this is essentially a list with pre-made items that you can complete. I have a weekly review checklist, for example, that I import and complete every Sunday. Alternatively, you can just set up recurring tasks with a subtasks for the same purpose. TickTick's template functionality is a bit strange to me. A task list can be created, but it seems to use neither a list nor a main plus subtask approach, but rather a third sort of checklist whose items cannot be tagged individually which is pretty poor execution in my opinion. On the other hand, TickTick does have note templates, which Todoist does not. What's good about Todoist's activity logs is the ability to filter between tasks completed, edit, edited, incompleted, deleted, and comments. What's not so good is that you cannot filter for a specific time. Instead, you can only scroll down to go further back in the past on a day-by-day -day basis. TickTick's completed list is more limited as it doesn't allow you to filter for all these things, but it's better in that it does allow you to filter for a time and within specific lists. Now that you've learned how these apps work for capturing, clarifying, and organizing, and some of the further functionality for reflecting, let's look at perhaps the most important aspect, which is engaging. In other words, are these apps actually helping you get more done, in that they are motivating, they are fun to use, you look forward to opening your app instead of dreading it. All of that contributes to actually to the right things at the right time. I heavily rely on Todoist saved filters to quickly find the list of tasks to perform from a certain context, which I've labeled. From there, I can see at a glance which tasks have which energy level required and time estimated. I can compare this to the time I have available to get going. The mobile widgets and time or location-based reminders are great for helping me run all my errands, complete my reading list, or do work around the house as needed. I can say the exact same thing for TickTick though. In fact, its additional desktop widgets and pinned items at the top, plus emoji support, give them an edge in this department. Visuals matter. I want to look forward to opening my to-do list, not dread it. Both apps support custom themes, including a dark mode. With Todoist, 
You can even set up a custom colored mobile app button to make it fit with your phone's aesthetic. In general, Todoist looks more slick and you can tell they paid a lot of attention to crafting an app on every platform that is pleasant on the eyes. So it wins out for me here. What TicTic has and Todoist does not though is an advanced integration with time estimating, managing and tracking. For any task, you can set up a time estimate down to the minute and run an integrated stopwatch to help you focus on it. Even cooler, you can also estimate and run Pomodoro sessions that you can tweak in the settings. These are focused work intervals with short breaks in between. It's simple enough not to be overwhelming, but thorough enough to truly help you focus. Now that we have gone through the functionality of these apps in great detail, I want to zoom out a little bit and ask the question, who is actually behind these apps? After all, when you decide to use one of them, you're entrusting a lot of sensitive information, so you need to feel good about who's hosting that. Todoist is transparent about their backstory, their values, and the people working with them. The company behind it is actually called Doist, and they also have another product named Twist. They started working on Todoist in 2007 and have been iterating ever since without any external funding. I have a soft spot for companies that can get where they are now with millions of users without any outside funding because it means they're in charge of their own destiny and they're not just a pawn on some venture capitalist chessboard. With 20 million customers, an average 4.5 star rating on the Google Play Store based on over 200k ratings and a 4.7 rating on the Apple Store, Todoist is a safe and trustworthy tool to commit your information to. I also found their customer support to be helpful and responsive whenever I needed them. TicTic, on the other hand, seems to be a bit secretive about who they actually are. From what I was able to find, the company behind it is named Appest, and it was founded in 2013. I couldn't find details about their financing, which is not a deal breaker, but what does concern me is how they seem to be hard to reach. I've tried reaching out to them numerous times, both for technical questions as a user, as well as other topics, and on multiple platforms too, email, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and I've never heard back from them. This has left me skeptical about making the move to Todoist despite a superior feature set. This does not mean that you will have the same experience with their support or that you will even need it. But since some users on Reddit have expressed similar sentiments, it's something worth noting. Taking all of these features that we've discussed in this video into account, let's have a look at them and score them to arrive at a final verdict. The way I went about it is, if the app executes a desired feature excellently, it gets two points. If it does so in a limited way, could be better, then it gets one point. And if it's just not there, totally insufficient, it gets zero points. Counting everything we discussed and converting it into an out of 10 score, we arrive at the following score. Todoist gets a 7.72 mark and TicTic an 8.06. As I kind of expected before I started this review, it's a super close call. And it's gonna be up to you to decide which one of these tools is gonna to be best for you. After all, the score assumes that every feature I scored for weighs equally heavy, but that's just not the case. If you, for example, don't care much for a Pomodoro timer, but you do care a lot about customer support, then Todoist is an easy choice. Instead of just taking my word and my total score for it, make sure that you note it down the details that are important to you and use those to make a decision. In the end, both of these apps are amazing and they will support you well in your productivity journey. You can find the links to both of them in the description to get started. Leave a comment if you have any questions about them or if you have any experiences that you wanna share based on how you've used either one. These are my two top favorite productivity apps, so you can be sure I will spend more time reviewing them and following any updates as they come. And I'm excited to see how they will continue to battle it out in this competitive space. And if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet.